Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we are starting part 5 of the B6385 Sew Along, our coat. And today we're doing everything that has to do with sleeves. So we'll be sewing our sleeves and then we'll be putting the sleeve head and the shoulder pad into that as well. Um, when we're done with today we have a shell of a jacket and it's looking really really good. Um, actually I finished the jacket by the time I'm filming this and it's pretty phenomenal. I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, <laughs> Not, not to toot my own horn, but very excited for my sister to, to receive it. Um, anyway, as always, let me know down below if you have any questions. And I do have a coffee account, which is a um, like a virtual tip jar. If you are would like to um, contribute to that, all money that's made from that does go right back into the channel with lighting, editing, um, camera equipment, all that kind of stuff um, that helps me make the best sewing sew alongs and tutorials that I can. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to leave any questions you have down below, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Okay, so today is sleeve day. All right, so we are going to um, sew our sleeves together. I'm obviously just going to be showing one. Then we're going to be inserting them into the um, coat, and then we will do our uh, sleeve heads and shoulder pads, um, which just makes for a really beautiful sleeve. Okay, so let's get started here. So we're gonna turn our upper sleeve um, and we're gonna start with this really long seam first. And we're going to sew with the upper sleeve on the feed dogs because we actually ease in a little bit of fullness, which basically is um, like the uh, um, dart that they have removed. Oh my word, hold on. I have it. <laughs> my sewing room door is shut and Gidget's very upset, hold on so angry when she's left out. Okay, so I'm going to be sewing the long um, seam first, five-eighths of an inch. Okay, and just matching my notches. Um, there's actually... Two dots on the sleeve pattern that you need to match. I just marked those as notches because you're supposed to ease between them. So I'm just matching those up. So I am um, just going to actually clip between those two areas where that easing happened just to release that. Just helps with the bend of the elbow a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna go over to the pressing station and I'm just gonna press that seam open. It's just a lot easier because um, you don't have to press open in the, um, in the round, which we will have to do for the other seam, but I'm gonna go ahead and press this first. Okay, so now um, that seam is pressed open. So now we're gonna sew the other side of the sleeve together. And you'll notice that this um, underarm seam comes to a point, which I found a little bit odd on the pattern. Most of the time, you know, it kind of, um, you know, block off or uh, kind of square off those tops of those seams. So basically it can just get kind of confusing when you're matching up rodges. So I'm gonna match my notches. So this just extends past um, a little bit and that's fine. You want the sewing line to match up. You don't really care about this little extra up here. So just a little PSA. Um, but actually I want that top, the upper sleeve on the bottom again. That anchored. All right, so now um, I'm going to now take it over to the um, pressing table and press it open. However, you're gonna have to use a seam roll, obviously, because we are now in a tube 
of fabric. So you're gonna have to put, you know, a rolled up towel or um, something in there uh, to get those nice and press open. So I, I use a seam roll, but yeah, get those nice and pressed open. And then we're gonna start shaping our sleeve. All right, so now that we have all of our seams pressed open, and I went ahead and I've pressed up my hem allowance, um, just giving it a good press. This will just make it easier when we're <laughs> actually securing the hem and that kind of thing. Um, same thing I did with the coat. So everything's just nice and pressed, and um, I haven't pinned anything just because it's a smaller area, but um, that's all nice and pressed. So now um, we are going to add some shape to the sleeve cap here just to make it a really beautiful um, set in sleeve on this tailored coat. Now, you guys know, if you've been watching any of these sew-alongs of the channel, at all you know that I'm a big fan of just letting the machine do the work for easing in sleeve caps a lot of times I'll set them in in the fl like flat um, that's not possible with the two-piece sleeve because right here is where the side seam for the coat matches up which clearly is you know in the middle of the under part of the sleeve plus when you're working with wool you can ease in setting it in in the round is easier because there's a lot of molding that you can do you can build in a lot of shape with the wool and some steam before you even put it in the coat and then we'll be um making that even better by putting in the shoulder pad which will obviously support the shoulder and then putting a sleeve head in so i'm actually going to do the easing stitches um i usually do those on my heavier wool coats um i actually just um did this to the other sleeve um and it's pretty in this fabric's intense <laughs> okay so i'm just going to do a line of ease of uh basting stitches so i've got it at a five uh, millimeter stitch length i'm not back stitching just leaving it open and i'm just going to go basically the around the top of the upper sleeve and then i do a little uh, rectangle and then go back around the same way i came so I'm not really, go I'm not going notch to notch. Um, I'm just doing the um, upper sleeve because that's really the top of the sleeve cap where we're wanting to build in some shape. So I'm going to do it at 3 eighths of an inch first. And then before I get to that seam, I'm just going to... Go down here, a couple, and come back around the horn. Okay, so once we have those put in, I'm gonna take you over to the pressing area and um, show you a way that you can set up kind of a mock sleeve or top of the shoulder. <laughs> um, I actually have, and I'll show you it as well, a pressing tool that, uh, that mimics um, a sleeve cap. And I have one sleeve setting on that. Um, again, think of this as putting your hair in rollers. You know, you've got to set, because <laughs> that's basically what wool is. It's the same makeup as hair. So, or very similar. And so, um, not the same, it's just similar. So um, we're going to do um, the same thing at, at a different method. Um, so yeah, I'll show you both. So let's go over to the pressing station. Okay, so here's the first sleeve, um, and this is the little, the little pressing doodad I was talking about, um, where I've gathered the sleeve cap and then pinned it in a few spots up here, and then I've just steamed the living daylights out of it just to create that shape, and now it's just kind of cooling and setting. So that's one way to do this, and I'm gonna push this one out of the way. But if you don't have one of those things, and I bought this at an in-person class, at a Claire Schaefer class. Um, I I feel like I've seen them on Etsy. You may just have to search. I'm not gonna be able to link to that because I, I have no idea where even to search for that. Um, but you can also take your seam roll and your ham, and we're going to basically recreate um, the same type of thing. Or if you have a, a ham holder, um, that works too. Okay. <laughs> Good enough. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to, you know, just like you would ease in any sleeve, I'm going to get a, get a stitch remover so that I can pull up some of my tails here. Ideally, you just leave a long tail, but my, um, machine automatically cuts. And so I can't do that. Just got to pick out a little. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm actually going to turn the sleeve right side out. The 
before we do any gathering. Or not gathering. Easing? I don't know. Okay. Ooh, sorry about the... Everyone's home for Christmas break now, so it's not quiet in my house. Okay, so I'm going to grab a couple, um, the two ends here. And the reason I like to do like a box is that you don't have to worry about accidentally pulling your thread through. So I'm just, you know, gathering basically, pulling that. Um, again, this fabric is a beast. So I'm just going slowly. And I really just want to get in here and to the top part of this sleeve cap, especially, which is where we need most of that. And you can already see, you know, like if you're looking on the right side where you're starting to build in that shape just by pulling these, these stitches here. When we actually insert this into the coat, we will also, um, we'll be building in some shaping there as well. Just a constant building of the shape. Again, if I had a little bit thinner uh, fabric, I mean, look at the difference between where we're shaping nicely and what hasn't quite been, quite gotten over there yet. You want to be careful not to break your stitches, so just be patient. That is not my forte. <laughs> Patience is something I have to work on a lot. And you want to make sure that you're not gathering this so much that you're going to get puckers, but I'm going to show you the magic of steam and how, because um, you are going to have some puckers along the cut edge. Um, there are waves, not puckers, waves. It's going to be wavy. All right. Okay. Again, if you're not using a melting wool, this is not nearly as difficult. All right, so we built in the shape, and we're just going to set it over the top. And there's my um, top notch. So I want that at the top of the sleeve, because that's how it'll go into the coat. And now we're just going to pin into the ham. I'm hoping you can see this. Try not to. I'm just pinning this into the ham. Um, and you can see that the bottom part of the sleeve, it's just hanging there. Because um, we're just really just concentrating here on the cap of the sleeve. Just stick some pins in there to keep everything as it should be. Okay, so you can see already we're getting some nice shaping, but it's kind of bumpy there. So without, we're not going to touch the coat. We're just going to steam, 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 steam. I'm not actually touching the coat or the sleeve um, with the iron. I'm just putting a lot of steam into that fabric. Okay, and once that's been saturated, you can kind of compress the seam allowance that's there. Kind of work and mold those stitches. Just, just use your hands. I mean, it really is like, um, like a sculpture, like you're sculpting with the wool. Now this one's a little bit wavy, but once it gets put into the sleeve head, you know, it'll fit just right and be good. Oh no, that's beautiful. And then you can just kind of play with it until you like it, which I think that right there is beautiful. Um, I'll pull you around here so you can see it just a little bit better. I mean, it's falling in on itself there, but don't worry about it. I mean, that's fine. Um, but yeah, that's really beautiful right there. And it is ripply, but again, once we get that, we just want to set that shape in. So now I'm just going to let that dry. Um, we're actually just going to insert this sleeve in. <laughs> it's like a cooking show. And then I open the oven and the things are done. Um, we'll go ahead and put this sleeve in because um, it's already had time to sit and um, um, set, basically. Okay, so once you've done that and once you've let your um, sleeve sit, and don't forget we have um, pressed the hem up on both of these, um, we're going to insert our sleeve. So I will meet you back over at the sewing um, machine. All right, so now um, I still have my basting stitches here. We'll pull those out here after a little bit. Um, I've got a sleeve 
and I've got my coat. So we are going to turn our coat, um, we'll just open it up, I'm not really turning it inside out because it's not, you know, a closed garment. We have to figure out which sleeve this is. Okay, so that's the front. You've got one notch here for the front, then you should have a notch here for the underarm seam, and then there's two notches for the back. Um, so that is this sleeve. Okay, <laughs> you have to always think about that. All right, so here's my coat. I'm gonna open it up. Turn it inside out, and now I'm just going to take my nicely um, shaped sleeve and stick it in here, do, 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 do. right sides together. So there it's gonna peek in there. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to match our notches. So I like to start at the under part of the sleeve. So I'm going to match um, the notch that's on the under sleeve to my underarm seam. And this part of the sleeve should match one to one. And then my notch here meets pretty perfectly. Um, it's like right after that seam allowance. I need to go find more bigger pins. That's what I need to do. <laughs> and then over here, okay, hold on. We need to adjust just a wee bit. There we go. There we go. Okay. And again, the underarm of the seam should be um, pretty one-to-one. -one. There we go. I kind of cut that underarm notch at a angle a little bit. There we go. Okay. And then up here at the top, and you want to make sure, yeah, up here at the top, we're going to match the center part um, or the top of the sleeve with the um, shoulder seam. So make sure you're not matching it because you've got your yoke seam over here too. That can get confusing. So make sure you're matching it to your shoulder seam. Okay, I'm glad I checked. I had a, a sneaky feeling. So the shoulder seam is not the top of the sleeve head either. There is a, um, the part of the yoke does come around to the front. So you need to make sure and mark, mat, la, mark that on your yoke. Okay, so now what we are going to do, ugh, without completely crushing what we put in here, so we have all of this area that needs to get eased in, and this is a Linda Lee trick actually. You're gonna go and wrap this around your finger, and it just builds in just a little bit more shaping, which really, you don't need to do much because you've already steamed a lot of that um, shape in there that it makes it pretty easy. Do one more here. But by wrapping it around your finger, it just adds, um, it adds the ease in there that you need. And usually the back of the sleeve is just a wee bit harder. So it's gonna be one-to-one -one up to this um, seam. I need bigger pins. And then it's all of this that it's the same thing. We just need to build in. And again, this wool just makes this so this process so easy. This is going to be the, if you're using um, a really high percentage wool fabric, oh, it's just it just works so well. Okay, don't forget to put your machine back at uh, the 2.5. And uh, yeah, we are now going to sew this in. And I'm actually going to sew with this um, in a around, so I'm not going to put the sleeve cap against the feed dogs because we have spent all that time building in all of that shape. So I sew in the circle so the sleeve is on top, if that makes sense. So let's come over here. Travel, travel. All right. And we're just gonna go slow. So we are gonna 
set the sleeve in, and then we'll pull those basting stitches out, um, and then we will do our um, um, sleeve head and then shoulder pad. Okay, so I'm going to start here at the underarm. And I'm just going to go slow because this is not super malleable. <laughs> this is pretty stiff fabric. So I want to make sure I'm just matching my cut edges together. That is important. Okay, when you're doing that, you want to make sure everything is staying. All these seams are pressed open, staying. Oh, look at that. Look at that beautiful, beautiful. All of that is shaping that we have put in there. Okay. Um, now is the time to go ahead and remove those basting stitches. Um, oh, my God. Let's take a look, though, at the right side of the camera, or the camera. <laughs> at the right side of the coat. Okay. And this is even before, my basting stitches are still in there, but this is even before um, we've removed our basting stitches, but look at that. So there's the top of the sleeve there. <gasps> look how beautiful that and rounded that is. Oh my gosh, that's so gorgeous. Um, oh, that's so, I'm so pleased with that. <laughs> God, melting wool is fantastic. It's a beast to get through your machine, but man, is it fantastic. Uh, keeping in mind that part of this um, uh, yoke does go around to the front. It's about five-eighths of an inch and in from the sewn line that the top of the sleeve cap is. Okay, so I'm going to remove my basting stitches, and then um, we are going to put in our sleeve head and then our shoulder pad. All right, now before we put in that sleeve head, um, Now's a good time to clip between these notches. So we have a notch here and a notch here. Um, I'm basically just gonna go to half the width here and I'm clipping these the same only because these just stand up right into your armpit. Um, so this just adds for a little bit more ease of movement. So yeah, trim that seam allowance about in half just between the notches. You could also go in, a lot of times um, 
I'm not even sure if the instructions for this do or not, but they will recommend doing a second set of stitching if you want. I've never had an issue with that, so I'm just gonna leave it as is, but there you go, okay? So do that on both sides, and then I will meet you right back here, and we will um, prep our sleeve cap, and then it gets put in by hand, or sleeve head, sorry. Prep our sleeve head, and it gets put in by hand. Okay, so now we're gonna be working with the sleeve heads and the shoulder pads. So this is um, Demet, and I actually bought these sleeve heads already cut. They're cut on the bias. Um, you can cut, I, I'll leave, I can no longer find the sleeve heads that I bought, but that bias bespoke does sell Demet by the yard. So you're just wanting to cut strips um, about two inches by nine inches. This one's actually bigger than that. Um, I usually have to cut off like quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit. But two inches by nine inches um, on the um, bias will we'll do it for you. So we've got those, and then I've got my sleeve um, shoulder pads, my sleeve pads, my shoulder pads, and they come in a set because there is a uh, right and a left, so you just want to make sure that you have the set and that um, you're not using you know two right ones or whatever. You can see that they are they are different on each side. And we'll talk about that a little bit more um, as we get into um, putting these into the actual coat. So that's what you need for these next steps. So before we actually, um, we're going to be doing a lot of hand sewing, which sounds bad, but it really isn't. So this demet, you can use lamb's wool too. This is like a lamb's or like a lamb's wool-ish. I'm sure it's synthetic on one side and then kind of this foamy material on the back. Um, you're just going to want to fold it over a half inch to five eighths of an inch, somewhere around there. Um, towards the foamy side is the wrong side. We're going to fold it over on itself and we're just going to stitch that down. You'll also notice I've changed um, thread color because I'm going to, we're going to be sewing the lining. Once we've put these in, we're going to be sewing the lining and I have run out of or I'm running out of bobbin thread of my regular color. So it is winding while we are sewing. And I would recommend if, I mean, especially if you're using like what I'm using, Don't press it because you will, um, oh, that's part of the tail from the, I was like, what happened there? Um, you'll melt it. <laughs> this is not real lamb's wool. Okay, so you're going to do that to both pieces. Uh, these do not have a right and the left. They're literally just strips cut on the bias. All right, oops. So that's how you prep those. Um, I actually like to pin these into my sleeve and then I decide where I wanna cut them off. I usually end up losing two to three inches though on the end of these, because they're really long. Um, but yeah, okay, so now that those have been prepped, now we are going to hand put these into the sleeve head. I wanted to show you the difference. I've already put in the sleeve head and shoulder pad on one side. I think you can probably tell just by looking. Um, so this one I have put, let me make sure everything's lying right as well, since there's not a lining in there to keep everything <laughs> lying flat. So this side I've already put in the sleeve head and the shoulder pad and look at the difference. Look how much this is collapsed on itself. Um, it's just a much, you know, and you don't get the, you know, even we, though we built in all that beautiful ease up there at the sleeve cap, you don't see any of it like you do on the side. So I just wanted to really quickly, and there I am, show you the difference and why we do the sleeve heads and the shoulder cap, or in the sle sleeve heads and the shoulder pads. Um, and I know a lot of people, shoulder pads get a real bad rep, um, you know, for being huge in the 80s or whatever, but um, it really does, you know, use an appropriate size, it really does help support the shoulder of a nicely tailored coat and just looks really well. Okay, so I've, like I said, I've already put this one in, so let's go ahead and put it into the other side. Okay, so I wanna show you really quickly. So I had mentioned um, with the wee sleeve cap, 
that, um, you know, that they're, that the ones that I have are, they're pretty long. And this is what I ended up cutting off either end of the previous one. So you can see there's a lot of excess there. Um, and again, you can make your own. Okay, so let's look at what we're heading towards, and then we will put them in. All right, I'm trying not to completely clear my table here and doing this with a tripod in my lap. Okay, so here is the side I've already done. This is basically just running stitches. <laughs> so here we go. So here is the, the top of our sleeve cap. Here our sleeve head is in there. Um, we basically are sewing with that... Um, folded edge right up against that um, seam line. We're keeping things loosey-goosey though. We want things to be able to move with the coat and so nothing gets pulled. We don't want any pulling. That is very unattractive. The same thing with the shoulder pad. Um, it's a running stitch. We wanna keep things pretty loosey-goosey. It's really just there to tack it down and then we've tacked down the back here just to the seam allowance um, at the, the shoulder just to keep it from you know flipping up. Again, there's gonna be a lining in here, so you don't have to worry about it catching on things once the lining's in. But that's where we're going with this. Um, that's what builds in that really beautiful shape. So let's go to our other sleeve. And we will talk about the differences in our shoulder pads when we get to the shoulder pad. All right, so here we are. Here, let me raise my camera just a bit. Sorry about the bright light shining in your eyeballs. Okay, so here's the front of our coat here. Um, again, this um, yoke kind of rolls to the front a little bit. So the top of my sleeve is right there at that notch there. We've got our sleeve inside the coat. I am going to take my sleeve head and this is, we're going to call this the right side and this the wrong side. Um, so the foamy side, the wrong side. So I'm just going to fold this in half and mark my center. It just makes sure that you don't, you know, run out of sleeve head. It's best just to have, we'll just mark it with a pen, to have too much. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pin this in right sides, right side to wrong side kind of. So the right side of this, I want this against my, um, is that right? Yes. Nope. I'm doing that wrong. I want this in because I want this against my sleeve when all is said and done. Okay, so, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I want um, the piece that I have folded over and sewn, so my foamy side is kind of up here. It's gonna go into the sleeve and I'm matching the center that I just marked with my notch. This is my um, top of my sleeve notch. And I'm just lining that up. So this is coming away from the sleeve. It's sticking up, at a, it's kind of counterintuitive the way we sew normally. And now I'm just going to pop a pin to keep that in there. So we're really just working within the seam allowances here. I can remove that pen. So now I'm just gonna move over here to the side and I'm just wanting this in the top, into the sleeve cap. Um, so basically just the upper sleeve. So I'm just gonna kind of, you know, finger walk this and I wanna make sure I have plenty, I don't wanna pull anything tight, so I wanna make sure I have plenty of room there. And this demet does, it molds really easily as well. Okay, so I think we're pretty good there. I could put another pen maybe like right there just to kind of make sure I'm, oh, that is a very bent pen. <laughs> Throw that one away. Just to make sure that I am giving myself enough room. So then I'm just gonna cut this off here. Straight off. And then we're gonna come around to the front part of the sleeve and do the same. Pop some pins in just to kind of keep things anchored. But I'm gonna stop uh, before I get to that notch. So let me put one more in. That is a really long pin. So we'll stop right at about here. Cut that off. And I missed the trash can. <laughs> okay, so we have that all pinned in there. And again, it's coming up weird away from the, the sleeve. That's okay, that's what we want. All right, now I'm just using regular Goodwin Mara thread. Um, I'm using red just so you can see it easily. And I am using a long milliner's needle 
This is the ones that I am using right here. Um, they're just nice and long, and they really are good if you're going through a lot of layers because they're nice and long. And I have threaded my needle here, but it's kind of gotten all crazy. Oh, boy. There we go. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. I'm throwing thread every which way. Okay, so I have doubled up my thread. I'm sewing with a um, two, you know, strands, and then I have them knotted here at the bottom together. This does not have to be pretty. If you pride yourself on your hand sewing and how wonderful and beautiful it is, this is not the time for that. <laughs> Seriously, the name of the game here is just to keep it um, real loose. So you're, you're tacking it in there, but you really just want to keep things nice and loose. So I'm just going to start here, and I'm only sewing through the seam allowance of where the sleeve joins the body of the coat. And we are just going to do really long and ugly running stitch. Let me come back up through here. And I'm just basically lining up this curved edge um, or the folded edge to that seam allowance. But because we're doing such long stitches, like it's not gonna stay there like perfectly and that's fine. So don't pull your stitches too tight basically is what I'm going for here. And it would also help if I pulled my pens closer to my, I'm working. This is like the easiest hand, quickest like hand sewing ever. It's not like the Zen kind where you're doing like pretty stitches. <laughs> And also, I can get away with using red thread here because all of this is in the seam allowances. This will never see any part of the right side of the coat. And as you can see, these are really long stitches. Okay, to do one more. And then I'm just going to tie it off here okay all right and you have a sleeve head in Okay, I'm just going to re-thread my needle the same way, and I'll be right back. We'll put in the um, shoulder, or the, um, sh yeah, shoulder pad. <laughs> All right, let's look at the anatomy of a shoulder pad. Okay, so this comes in a set, and you can see, I mean, they obviously come with a curve here. Um, there is usually a, I think this one was missing it, um, but there is one here. This notch here is the center um, where that should join the, the sleeve cap. So if you actually fold those in half, you'll see that they are not symmetrical. They are different. And uh, this pair has a notch on for the back. So that's how you know which side goes to the back. Now, when it's on your body, obviously it's going to fit on your body the way it's curved. But that means it has to get sewn in upside down. Um, so that when the coat is then right side out, it sits correctly on your body. Also, the fat end goes towards the seam allowance, skinny end goes towards your neck. I think that's pretty much everything. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to flip this out. Okay, so we do have a forward um, shoulder seam here because of just the the way that the coat is drafted. But here is my notch for the top of my sleeve. So I'm actually gonna match the top of my shoulder pad. And look, it's it's going like this, and that's what we want. 
And I'm just gonna match those. And we are matching um, the edge of the shoulder pad with the edge of the seam allowance. I'm just gonna somewhat pin this because this gets a lot of layers. Okay, so now we are just gonna start at one end and work our way and we are tacking this down again with a loose running stitch all the way through the seam allowance. So I'm just gonna turn the coat and I'm using my same needle I was just using for the sleeve head with a double strand of thread. I'm just gonna turn things around so that I can sew this in. So now we're working on the top of that seam allowance. So just kind of push that out of the way and you'll see those running stitches like they're pretty um, loose there, which is what you want. Now, when I get to the shoulder pad, I almost always have to do a, I can't really do a running stitch. It has to be more like a stab stitch. <laughs> and that's fine. So now, again, same, oops, loosey-goosey stitches, long running stitches, because we want this to be able to move with the jacket with the wearer, and we don't want any puckering. Okay, remove that now. And we're basically just tacking this in place. We also don't wanna um, smush the, I mean, we want some of that, we want that thickness there at the shoulder cap, like that's what's giving us some of our shape, so we don't wanna compress it too much. And we also don't wanna go too, past the, Seam allowance um, because we don't want to give ourselves football shoulders. <laughs> All important things to take into consideration. And then we're just gonna tie that off. And cut that, but I'm going to re-knot this thread because now we're going to just tack down the neck edge. All right, so once you have that all done, nice and loosey-goosey, Get everything lying pretty nicely. Um, because this is a forward shoulder, you're not gonna be like on the, yeah, it's not gonna line up like straight in the middle of the um, shoulder pad. So just let it do what it wants to do, you know, pull and then just kind of, and you also wanna make sure you're not like buckling anything. So make sure everything is lying nice and flat. And then I'm just going to do a couple of back stitches at the top of this shoulder pad into just one side of the seam allowance up here. And this is just um, gonna keep that tacked down and keep it from flipping around when it's, you know, goes to the dry cleaner or making a horrible thread nest here. Not too concerned about it, but. <laughs> okay. And we'll just knot that off and that just keeps that tacked down. All right, and then we will clip that. And there you have it. You have just put in a sleeve head and a shoulder pad into your tailored coat. Guys, let's go to, back to, let's put it back on the mannequin and we're gonna talk about where we go from here. Okay, now this mannequin is smaller than my sister or myself are, but look at those shoulders. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, I'm just in love. I think a little bit of that puckering, a um, little bit of steam, and that's going to go away. Oh my gosh, this coat is coming out so good. I'm so impressed with myself. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn. Okay, um, now we have got the entire body of the coat together. I have pressed my bottom hems, and they are pinned just to hold them. And I've pressed the hems in my sleeves, but they haven't been, nothing's, I haven't sewn them or anything. They've just been pressed. Um, so this is a nice, 
If this were any less of a stable fabric, they would probably be falling out right now, the hems, but we just want that um, memory crease, uh, and that's why they're, they're staying up there kind of like they are. Okay, guys, tom next week, I keep saying tomorrow, that's not correct. Next week, we are going to do um, the lining, and then we are going to get things put together and, um, yeah, get this, uh, well, yeah, do the second part of the bound buttonholes and get this coat finished. All righty. We probably have a few more weeks, though, until we've actually finished the coat. But, uh, yep, moving on to the lining. We're getting close.